Um, send me an email. All right, cool. Um, anyone here familiar with the site called Daring Fireball? A few. For the others, it's lots of Mac notary. Don't worry about it. Um, but <laughs> one of the things that it in, um, kind of invented and popularized, <clears throat> or rather, uh, John Gruber, the writer of, of Daring Fireball, um, invented is a blog post or an article format that is a translation of corporate speak to English, where he would take like a press release where like, hey, Adobe is buying Macromedia, and then would go through whatever they say and then translate that to English because the language that comes out of these big corporations is usually bullshit. So we need people to translate it. And so he came up with this, with this uh, thing where he goes through it paragraph by paragraph and then has like a really funny remark at the end. And um, it's also cool that the first one was about Adobe um, because I did one as well. Like two, three years ago, the CTO of Adobe was posting a thing and I thought, whoa, that's a lot of bullshit. Uh, let, me, let me translate that. So with apologies to John Gruber, um, I translated a bit called The Multi-Screen Revolution by then Adobe CTO Kevin Lynch, who has now uh, started at Apple, of all places, um, to not be the CTO, but like some still senior, but not as high VP there. Um, and the whole thing is about how we'll have phones and tablets and desktop computers of various sizes, and building apps for them is going to be hard. And, um, that Adobe is maybe eventually going to sell you a solution that allows you to build apps for all platforms with one go and it will all be flash based and it will be great. Um, but that actually doesn't quite matter. Um, the, the thing he's, um, the, or the, what, a few of the things that he said I'm, I'm picking out for this talk here. One of the things he said was this, wireless operators already are starting to roll this out, starting at speeds of 10 to 20 megabits a second. And the technology has the ability to ramp up to 50 to 100 megabits on a per user basis on the next several years, which will be now. Uh, of course, the speed will vary depending on which type of building you're in. I don't think he was considering boats um, and other facts. But generally, we can expect to see wireless bandwidth over time, uh, over five times faster than what we're experiencing today. Like, cool. I translated that to, I don't know how mobile networks work because I ignore the fact that latency is even more important than bandwidth. It just yabbers and yabbers about the megabits, but not the how long does it take for me to get a signal. Like that, was, that was quite funny. The other thing he said is overall it's going to be a plentiful bandwidth environment that's going to be great for anyone building experiences such as streaming HD video, like we're doing from here, um, multi-user games or rich collaboration on the web. Um, given of the context that he's like promoting this big platform that you build apps on that take these things as the principles that you have fast internet available everywhere, I translated this to we're going to make the web even slower. <laughs> that was the funniest line of that blog post. Um, but the, the, the main point here is not that I want to make fun of Adobe or anyone else, um, but there is actually like an established way of thinking about networks, and one of the things that's rather famous is a thing called the fallacies of distributed computing. Who here knows about them? That's good. You're a good crowd, but not enough hands. Uh, the fallacies of distributed computing were invented by people at Sun that were way smarter than I'll ever be in the 80s. What the 80s looked like. <laughs> to illustrate um, how far away the 80s are, it's 30 years. The average French person eats 23 kilograms of cheese. It's 50 pounds of cheese per year. 30 years of cheese is 700 kilos or 1,500 pounds of cheese. That's a lot of cheese. 30 years is a long time when the people who invented networks figured out how to do networks and were still making the mistakes. Like even the bloody ex-CTO of Adobe fell for it. Um, I want to pick two fallacies to discuss with you today. That's the bonus one in the end, but don't forget. One of them is the network is always fast. If you assume that, you'll be in big trouble. Um, I have a side rant here. I already alluded to it. His marketing blah uh, include like megabits per second and hundreds, and it's going to be fast and everything. Like ever since I pay started paying attention to networks, the bandwidth was the one thing that every like that's on all the advertisement. Get faster internet now, oh, 16, 100, 1,000 gigabit, whatever. That's all cool. Um, but 
there's, there's other parts to networks. Uh, do you, has anyone ever here worked on a satellite internet connection? Right? It's really nice and fast, but if you need to do a lot of small requests, it's gonna take a while. And it's not a really good experience. It's, once it's going, it's nice and fast. That's cool, though. Mm. Who here is a gamer who plays games? Like uh, first person or like or car racing, that kind of thing that you play against others on the internet? Aside from the people, like the 14 year old kid who's better at Counter Strike than you, like what makes you sweat? Aside, like not, not the other players, what makes you sweat? When your ping time goes up, exactly. It's like the, the amount of time it takes for your reactions to go to the other players, and in that time the other players don't see you and they can shoot you, they have an advantage. So when your ping time goes up, you go, oh my god, that's bad. Latency is the important thing in a network. Not bandwidth. Bandwidth is good. Bandwidth is plenty. Like I can make good fun, a good use of all the bandwidth. But latency is the important part. Nobody ever talks about the latency. So please, for the love of humanity, talk about latency, please. Anyway, end of rant. The other um, na uh, fallacy of network or distributed computing um, is the network is always available. This is my favorite one. Um, and there's no denying that wired, wireless, mobile technologies get better and better. But we'll never get to a situation that Kevin Lynch described, where everywhere on the planet we have super fast, super low latency, super wide bandwidth, um, mobile internet connections. We'll never get there for various reasons. Um, to illustrate one, um, I came here from Berlin by train to this wonderful city. Thanks for having the conference here. Um, and it, especially on the German side, there's a good chunks of land where the train goes through that has no LTE, no 4G, no 3G, no edge, no GPRS, if you know the little, like no, no service, no bars, no nothing. No internet at all. And there's practically nobody there except every five minutes a thousand people run through there. That's not enough for a mobile operator to put in a big pipe or like a put in a, a big connection point. But we'll never get there for, for various, uh, for, for infrastructure reasons. <clears throat> the other part um, comes up when I'm going over the border to France. I stop talking to my mobile provider and talk to a French one. And there's an agreement between the two so that I can use the internet at, at uh, prices that are way more expensive than blood. Um, <laughs> that wasn't a joke. That's not funny. Telecommunication companies are fundamentally evil. Like, it's really, really bad. So who here is not from France? Who, who, uh, no, keep your hands up. Who is happy with that data roaming situation? <laughs> like, yeah, you are because you're with Swisscom. That doesn't count. But there's, there's, you don't care. Okay, you, you're rich then. Fine. That's good. <laughs> That's good. So, um, so there's, other reasons why we'll never get to this ubiquitous situation. And hey, I want to watch a, a YouTube clip on my phone at 320 kilometers an hour in the really neat QGV train in France in the middle of nowhere. It's just not happening. And Kevin Lynch can build all the HD streaming servers in the world. It's not happening because the network isn't there. It's not happening because I can't pay for the bits. And yeah, I don't know. He's not CTO anymore anyway. Um, so it's kind of ignoring the real world. That's why I like the fallacy. So do learn them. Um, and taking the latency bit that I talked about earlier, like to a little bit further extreme, um, if you have infinite latency, you have no availability. That means no app, you make no money, you don't solve problems, you make angry users. It's fundamentally a bad situation. Um, I want to show you just really quickly a different scenario. So that I'll switch over here. I'll do this. Magic happens. We'll go here. Cool. I have a little note-taking app. I already took a note. Say hi to you. Hi. Um, and I can take more notes. Um, beers later. It's really important. Um, now, I can open the same app on my phone. And instead of doing the phone and like trying to show you the video and everything, um, well, I've prepared a thing here. Um, oh, interesting. Um, the, let's see if I'm logged in still. Should be. Let me reload this thing. Um, Give me a second for the phone. Well, like, it's a mobile connection. It takes a while. You know this. Um, oh, yeah. Bridge later. Cool. It syncs over there. That's nice. Um, uh, what else? Say hi to more 
people, because I haven't met everybody yet. I'm not, I'm not sure if I can get everybody, but I'll, I'll try. Um, so, oh, cool, it, it appears on the other side as well. That's quite nice. So now, um, anyone who is on a computer or phone right now, um, you're invited to go to this URL. I hope you can read it. It's rtc-janl.jit.su, jitsu um, Go there. In the top right, there's a, a login form thingy, sign in. You don't have to sign up, but sign in with a user, username test, password test, and be nice. This is live stream to the internet. You know what? My train just uh, ran through a tunnel. I'll go offline. You see? I'm going offline here. There, I have no Bluetooth connection as well. There's no wires except the video thing. So I'm, I'm offline now. Oh, and I need to do more things. Uh, I really like some cake. Eat cake. I'll write that. Oh, and I'm also on the phone. Um, and I really like, I had some coffee, I'll, and coffee with the cake, of course. Um, so I'll do that. Um, but you see, I'm offline. I'm doing nothing. I can still use the app. That's really nice. Like I have, I currently have infinite latency, which is a positive way of thinking. I'm off, saying I'm offline, uh, but I can still use my app. That's quite cool. But I go online again. Takes can take a second. Um, let's see how this goes. Demo gods prevail. And then if if we got a, did anyone? Hey, cool. There's a few things showing up there. Hey. While I was offline, still ha things still happen. The eating, the eating coffee should be here, over here, cool. So I've got all my stuff. That's nice. It's very nice. Instead of, or before, um, showing you how I did that trick, I want to explain a little bit how I got there. Um, and this is going to be like, did anyone read that, like, you're not Steve Jobs kind of post the other week? Um, I'm, like, I'm going there. Um, you, I'd like to invite you to take a different perspective on how to do network programming um, and not necessarily to replace your current ideas with it, but like augment it and see it's like another tool to think about networking and build better applications. Um, and I'd also like to invite you to not make the same mistakes that all the famous people have already formulated into a list that you can Google. Like, there's already a list of mistakes like, that has a name. Don't make these mistakes, please. Um, the, my mission here, and I'll, I'll go, go into more detail in a bit, um, is to, while real time is really cool and you can do fun stuff with it, um, you kind of all expect a synchronous or asynchronous like socket.open call to succeed and then you want to send messages. Like that's that's the base assumption that you all or most of you have. I can work without sockets just because I'm thinking a little bit differently about networks. You can do too. So um, that's kind of um, trying to get you there. Um, so back to the sorcery. Um, I'm just mentioning or uh, I am gonna mention a bunch of tools that embody the the principles I want to talk about. This isn't necessarily an endorsement of them, and there's not an exhaustive list, so there's more tools that, that solve this, but um, I'll just like, show you what I use to build this and some else's. And this is like, this is the super big reveal. You would never have thought about this, trust me. Um, the, the underlying ideas are all built into CouchDB, of course, which is the thing I'm doing. Um, um, CouchDB is a fine database, but the thing that really makes it stand out um, is replication. And that's a protocol and an implementation that allows you to synchronize data between an arbitrary number of points. <gasps> that's a very good definition, but still. Um, and I won't go into the details of how CouchDB works. Talk to me later. Um, but I want to pick up this replication protocol. Um, has anyone here about, heard about PouchDB? Yay, awesome. So PouchDB is like CouchDB. It speaks the same replication protocol, but it's written in JavaScript for the browser. It gives you a fully capable offline database that has built in a synchronization protocol that you can sync between any number of servers. How crazy is that? It's pretty cool, actually. And then TouchDB is yet another thing and yet another implementation of this protocol in, uh, in Objective-C and in Java for iOS and Android, so you can even build native apps with this, which is quite cool. Um, but again, the, the tools aren't that important. Um, it's more of what you can do with them. So I made up a quote for you that you can quote. <laughs> Think of CouchDB as Git for your application data. 
And this is less the, oh, I have multiple revisions and I have three-way merge and that stuff, but more the, oh, I'm working on a cool thing. Oh, I want to show Adam this cool thing. And oh, oh if Adam found a bug, he fixes it, he pushes the bug to me. But he also shows it to Amy, who might uh, um, fix another thing and pushes that back to me and to Adam. And it all works out. And when it looks nice, we put it on GitHub and then you check it out and it looks good. And also our continuous integration server checks it out and sees if the code is okay. And if it is, it pushes it to Nojitsu, as you do. That kind of flexibility to have data where you need it or have data where you can do certain computations with it that you want to do and um, have that work asynchronously, work this in, make this independent. You can write to all the copies of the data and everything is reconciling later. That's, like, that's the core power here, um, the, being able to push and pull data between all the locations. And uh, now, um, instead of doing all the things that are like technically behind this, that I'm not telling you right now. Um, we built a little framework for you if you're a web application developer and soon also native developers um, that has all these principles built in basically. So app, if you start a new app of those, this type, um, they're offline by default. They do all the synchronization for you. You can have multiple clients. It's real time when you're connected, but it's, it still works when you're offline. Um, and it's called Hoodie. It's a really nice thing. Check it out. I'm not going to talk about Hoodie either, um, but check out hood.ie. Um, if you're into web development and tell all your web development friends, they will really, really like this. Um, and if you're too lazy to understand distributed systems, or at least a bit, you can use Hoodie and we give you nice JavaScript APIs for your browser. Um, so, so much for the advertisement here. Who knows what that is? Or like, who doesn't know what this is? To be honest. Very right, cool, a few people. This is a GitHub issues page. Uh, you, knew, you, knew, you knew that. Um, <laughs> And also, it could be a, a it could be a pull request as well. Um, now, this is an example of a type of application um, that I really, really, really like. You can set issue, you can set up your GitHub that it sends you emails whenever a new issue is, is created and when comments are made on this issue. And you can reply to these emails that get sent to GitHub, and then they sh show up on the website. Um, and I can send email whenever I want to. For example, on the train in France which I did on the way here because GitHub is awesome and I want to work in open source. So I went through all the open issues that I had and commented on them. And then I sent them on the train without internet connection. Now, how did I do that? Well, email has offline built in. It was put into my IMAP outbox folder. It didn't actually get sent until I got to the hotel, which had semi-crappy Wi-Fi. And then they got sent to GitHub, which made it appear on the website. Excellent. Cool stuff. Offline usage. I love this. Um, now, if I know that the people who are commenting here are online, I can just open the page and check it out. And as they comment, the issues show up in real time. Just the, they just pop up. You don't have to reload or anything. It's really, really cool. So I, when I'm online, I get really nice chat-style real-time interaction. When I'm offline, I can still use it. Fuck yeah. Um, now, there's one issue with this. Um, Sometimes I tether my phone to my laptop. So my phone provides internet for my computer when I'm on the train and it's spotty and stuff. And I want to comment on the website because I don't have the, the, the right email thing ready. Um, so I can, I can still open the website. It's a little bit slow, but it works. And I put in a comment and say send. What then happens is my computer sends a thing to my phone. My phone sends a thing to my mobile operator uh, that has a bunch of proxies to do crazy stuff. And then it eventually goes to GitHub, which then posts this to the website. And now GitHub tells the the, the mobile provider and the proxies, hey, that, that succeeded. It's all good. The communication goes back until, well, I'm just going to a tunnel. That information, that, that comment was received, never comes back to my computer. And the, the website thinks, well, I've waited a minute now. It's not going to happen. So the, I get a timeout. You want to try again? Well, sure, I'll try again. Do it again, and I'm out of the tunnel, and it works. And I get a comment, and the page reloads, and boom, two comments. What? The first one made it, but I never got the answer back, so my computer thought I, it never made it. This is a, a type of problem that's very typical for building distributed systems, and there are solutions for that that I'm also not telling you. Um, so while this is a really good example of what I'm talking about, there are still things one could improve. Now, um, summing up a little bit, um, thinking offline first isn't better. You shouldn't like, just, like, stop everything you're doing and start doing that. Um, but Thinking offline first enables you to build better applications if you can if you can make make use of it. Um, the other point is, um, as soon as you start doing computer stuff with more than one computer, you're building a distributed system, and 
there's a variety of research and experience in building distributed systems and going la 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 um, and pretending you're not building a distributed systems well it sets you up for failure um, and I know the original description for this talk included hey I'll just show you all the details I, I give go into the nitty-gritty like the problem I just showed with the double posting and how to solve that and everything we learned so much today like that I can't I don't think I could explain it right now it's like it's not really like, it's not very hard but still it was I thought i would change my talk a little bit to get you thinking about offline instead of giving you all the tools and solutions but I will be here all day and it will be all day I'll be here all day tomorrow and if you're interested in the details of how to solve the double posting problem and other stuff that is relevant in distributed system, come and talk to me, especially if you haven't talked to me yet, because I'd like to meet you all. With that, I'll close. Thank you very much.